It's been three seasons since I've last discussed the weapons of Apex, and a ton has changed. Some weapons were put in the package, some were removed, a ton of buffs and nerfs. SMGs no longer have barrel stabilizers, but now they have laser sights, which is cool, but debatably makes them all worse. But surprisingly, no new weapons were introduced. But who needs new weapons when you got the L-Star? This gun is so- oh! Oh, this is just as annoying as using a web browser that doesn't have a dark mode feature. Well, it wouldn't happen if you used today's sponsor, Opera GX. You guys already know that with Opera GX, making the switch from Google Chrome to Opera GX is really easy with their import tool feature and the fact that it uses Google Chrome extensions. And I already told you guys about the CPU RAM limiters to reduce lag, but Opera GX has even more to offer. For starters, you can fully customize your browser with animated wallpapers, which is really easy to do and it looks really slick. I mean, look at that. Pretty nice. The GX Corner keeps getting better and better. You can see all my latest videos like before, but you can also get the latest gaming news. And with GX Profiles, you can customize your Opera GX experience to be whatever you need. If you're a streamer and you want a streaming mode, boom! That easy. None of your fans are gonna see any of that private stuff. But what do you got to hide, huh? What do you got to hide, huh? Tell me. Is your PC not running smoothly? A potato mode over here to make it way more basic. It gets rid of all the bells and whistles so that you can just have a simple browsing experience. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and download Opera GX by clicking the link in the description down below. Do it! Just do it! Download Opera GX already! Okay, back to the tier list. I could just edit it so that I go down. I don't have to actually physically go down, right? Since it's been three seasons since I made a tier list, I thought it'd be a good time to make another weapons tier list. Per usual, I will not be discussing care package weapons. They are all S tier, except the Rampage. That's like B tier at best in the package. And as per usual, I will be going over buffs and nerfs that I think weapons need, especially in the lower tiers. So without further ado, let's do another tier list video, shall we? F tier. There's no weapons this bad, so nothing to see here. Let's just move along. D tier. This is a tier for weapons that are generally pretty bad. They are borderline doo doo garbage, and the only weapon that's in D tier is the P2020. With hammer points, it's decent, but you would much rather have an SMG or a shotgun. Without hammer points, it's borderline useless. It's just never the best option in any scenario, and not even the best weapon with hammer points. So why bother? The P2020 needs a buff, most likely to its damage or rate of fire for it to see any play. Or, hear me out, respawn, akimbo? Imagine dual wielding these. It would be so fun. Just think about it. But until they let us run around like it's Modern Warfare 2 in 2008, it'll be stuck here in D tier. Now we have C tier. These are below average weapons that are decent at the beginning of the game or in niche situations. At the bottom of C tier, there's the L star. Somebody once told me that this weapon was good, but with so much competition in the energy weapon department, no use for the golden magazines, the L star is in a rough place this season. It's one saving grace is that it can be feathered to never overheat, but with how weak it is at range, you would much rather have any other energy weapon in your arsenal. I think a simple accuracy buff would help this weapon compete with other LMGs and energy weapons. But until then, it's at the bottom of seeds here. Next up, we have the Mozambique. The Mozambique is still here. Hammer points returning has been helpful to it being a lot more useful, but with hammer points, it doesn't do as much damage as it used to. Plus, the shotguns this season just outclass it aggressively. It's no longer poo poo, but it's just a very average gun at the moment. A simple buff would be to increase its damage with hammer points slightly, not to its former glory, but enough to really be a threat. I would love to see the day that the Mozambique is in A tier, but until then, it's down here in C tier. Next up, we have the RE45. The RE45 is in a strange place. With hammer points, it can rival some of the best SMGs, but needing a hop-up to be just as good as other guns means it's not that good. Also, since it doesn't have a stock, losing the barrel stabilizer attachment really decreased its effectiveness in mid to long range. And not being able to provide value at that range is not ideal. If they ever add a Kimbo, you know, like with the P2020 I mentioned earlier, I think the RE45 would be a great weapon to receive this buff. It would have to lose hammer points to be fair though. But until you can run around with the Kimbo RE45, it'll stay here in C tier. And at the top of C tier, we have the Alternator. I'm not an Alternator hater. I actually love it, especially on drop, but that's it. The moment I find an R9, car, or 301, it's bye bye Nader. Simply put, it's just outclassed. And it will probably always stay that way until they bring back disruptors. But nobody wants that. Well, I mean, I want it, but I know it will be busted. I genuinely love the Alternator when it was in the care package. And I hope one day it'll come back to the package where it belongs. But I think it's always going to be that placeholder gun in C tier. 
Now we have B tier. These are weapons that are good in general, but they have flaws and are outclassed by the A and S tier weapons. At the bottom of B tier, we have the Hemlock. The Hemlock is my favorite weapon in this game, and it is great from a distance, but being a burst weapon in a game full of fully auto beasts is just unfair, especially with the Hemlock's hit fire not being as powerful as it used to be. A small buff I would give the Hemlock is to increase its hit fire accuracy again, so it can compete in the close to mid-range fights with so many powerful weapons that can do that, but it's decent regardless, and that's that's why it sits at the bottom of B tier. Next up, we have the Sentinel. The Sentinel is a strong sniper, and when you charge it with your shield cells, it's nuts. But it's outclassed by other snipers and marksman weapons. Its fire rate is very slow, so there isn't much wiggle room if you miss. The only buff that I would recommend, and the same buff that I keep recommending, is that either make it only cost one shield cell to make disruptor rounds, or allow for the disruptor rounds to not be on a timer, but instead just be an amount of ammo. I really don't like that when you charge the disruptor ammo, if you don't shoot it for a while, it just disappears. It doesn't make any sense. But it's not a bad gun. Simply put, other weapons are just better, and that's why it's comfortably in B tier. Up next, we have the Prowler. The Prowler is in a strange place. On one hand, its hip fire accuracy is hilariously good, and in close range, it absolutely melts opponents. But on the other hand, so do other SMGs that don't have the burden of being a burst weapon. Now, unlike the Hemlock, the Prowler's burst fire rate is so fast you hardly notice, but it does have issues from the mid to long range game. But honestly, if you're going to just play in close range, shotguns exist. The only buff I would give the Prowler is a slight recoil reduction when aiming down sights, so it can hit things from further than 5 feet away. Next up, we have the Triple Take. The energy weapon meta has gotten better, meaning that there's a lot more ammo around. But if you're going to rock a marksman weapon, there's two others that blow the Triple Take away. Don't get me wrong, you can see a lot of success with this weapon, especially with its fun hop up. So I don't have any recommendations for a buff, except that maybe allowing it to use less energy ammo per shot. So it's on par with its competition, the G7 Scout and the 3030. But until then, it's gonna stay here and be tier. Next up, we have the R99. How the mighty have fallen. The R9 is still the R9. Any good player can go off with this SMG, but the reality is that the competition has gotten a lot tougher. So justifying using this SMG over ARs and its little brother, the car, is hard to do. Like I said, it's still a powerful weapon. It's just outclassed. And it's going to stay that way in Vibe here and Beats here until they nerf the other SMGs. Then we have the Charge Rifle. The Charge Rifle probably deserves to be higher, but in good conscience, I refuse used to acknowledge it as a good weapon, since I hate it so much. But in high ranks, poking people from across the map and upgrading your armor early is an option in this game that is viable. The charge rifle doesn't need any buffs or nerfs, but I wouldn't mind reverting it back to its original form and putting it in the care package, just so we have to deal with it less. So yeah, B tier. Moving on. Then next we have the Devotion. This weapon is so scary with a turbocharger. Without it, it's less scary. Imagine that it's an A tier weapon with a turbocharger and a C tier weapon without it. So let's meet in the middle and say B tier, cool? Cool. Next up, we have the Spitfire. This at one point was the most broken weapon of all time, but thankfully with nerfs to its accuracy and hit fire, it's in a place where it's useful but not game breaking. And we as a society should be okay with it here and leave it at that. No need to buff it for fear of its reckoning, but know that it can be decent in most scenarios. But most ARs just do its job better. That's why it's in B tier. And last but not least in B tier, we have the Longbow, the best of the snipers, if you don't count the marksman weapons. It is a beast and shouldn't be underestimated. But now that there's weapons that exist that require less ammo and are using attachments that are more common, the longbow just always feels like a worse alternative. If you're a person who likes to land six shots across the map, this is the weapon for you. And it will stay at the top of B tier until they nerf some of the other weapons that we are discussing next. In A tier, these weapons are great with little to no flaws. All weapons just strive to be here and I will not recommend buffs or nerfs to any of these weapons. Then the first weapon in A tier is the 3030 repeater. They gave this gun skull piercer, increased its reload speed, and it still uses heavy ammo. In the right hands, this thing is unfair. Its hip fire is also not even that bad. This is essentially a wingman that can be used at long range. What more can I say? Sure, it's not ideal in close range, but besides that, it's great, and it belongs at the bottom of A tier. The next weapon in A tier is the Havoc. The Havoc never even needs a turbocharger to destroy whole teams. It's just a solid all-around assault rifle that becomes broken the moment a turbocharger is on it. The Havoc belongs comfortably 
comfortably in A tier and it's hard to dispute it. So don't and just move on. The next weapon is the Flatline. So the Flatline received a pretty vital nerf in its hit fire accuracy, reducing its utility in close range, but it's still pretty damn good regardless. So don't sleep on it ever. It's still a fan favorite and will always see use as the best mid range rifle in the game. So while it's no longer S tier, it's still a force to be reckoned with in A tier. Next up, we have the G7 Scout. This is the best sniper. Period. Its rate of fire is unmatched, its damage is so strong, and its ammo type makes it never run out of ammo. What's not to like besides its ugly iron sights? Sure, it's terrible in close range, but that's not where you're using it for dummy, and that's why it's not S tier, but it's comfortably close to the top of A tier. Then we have the CAR SMG. The CAR doesn't have laser sights because the devs knew that this gun was already too powerful for that. Its rate of fire is unmatched. Its DPS is astounding. It's the best light and heavy SMG in this game. And it's that versatility that makes it even better than the rest. The only reason it's not S tier is because there's just one other SMG that just outshines it. But otherwise, it's close to the top of A tier. And at the top of A tier, we have the Peacekeeper. The best weapons in close range are shotguns. And all the shotguns are kind of amazing this season, and the Peacekeeper is literally still the Peacekeeper. It's nuts. It's at the top of A tier and not S tier because, like the car, there's just one other gun that does its job better, which means, yes, for the first time in a long time, another ground loot shotgun is better than the Peacekeeper. Congratulations, everybody. Is this the Apex you want? <laughs> And now we have S tier. These weapons are at the peak of Apex and any combination of them is a great loadout. S tier weapons probably should receive a slight nerf in my humble opinion because they're just that good. At the bottom of S tier, we have the Wingman, which now uses sniper ammo, which semi balances this otherwise broken gun. Anybody who can aim it accurately knows how strong this weapon is and how scary it will always be. I don't think it needs any nerfs, although one could argue that Skull Piercer didn't need to come back for this gun. But other than that, it's an S tier your weapon, so practice using it, you noob. Next up in S tier, we have the R301. The R301 is the most consistent weapon in this game. It's super accurate, it does great damage, it is good in all ranges, even close range, and it has remained relatively unchanged for years. Should it be changed? Honestly, it doesn't really need to be. It's just a weapon that does what it's supposed to do optimally. It's not perfect due to its small magazine size, but otherwise, this weapon deserves its spot in S tier, and will probably stay here until the end of time, or until respawn decides it belongs in the care package or something. Next up, we have the best shotgun in the game, the EVA. Why did they buff the EVA? Its damage output is super high, it has the ability to use stocks now, making it more accurate, and it has double tap, which I personally don't use, but it can make it even stronger. It needs a damage nerf ASAP. It's just too much, and it's too forgiving with the amount of ammo it has. But until they nerf it, it belongs in S tier. And now, at the top of this entire list, we have the best weapon in Apex Legends, which is the Volt. They gave us back the Volt, and we will abuse it as long as it's on the ground. It's the best SMG, the best energy weapon in the game, and the best weapon, period. The Volt is incredible at close to mid-range, and even decent at long ranges. It's accurate, it's strong, and it's a fan favorite, so finding ammo won't even be that difficult. The simplest way to nerf this monster is to do what they did with the car and remove its ability to use laser sights. But until then, it's the best weapon in the game, and it's at the top of S tier. Okay, so that is the weapon tier list. But what do you think? Do you agree with my list? Do you disagree with it? What do you think is the worst weapon in this game? And what do you think is the best weapon in this game? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you later.